Hello everyone, this is Dr. E, and for today we're going to work on how to formulate biconditional statement in geometry. And to be able to understand biconditional statement, of course, you should know how to formulate and write a conditional statement wherein we have our hypothesis and our conclusion. So by definition, a biconditional statement is equivalent to writing a conditional statement and its converse. Now, for a biconditional statement, we use the phrase if and only if. And just like in any mathematical idea, Operations are important, and in a biconditional statement, the operation that we're going to be using is the if and only if verbal operation, and we can also use its symbol form that we're going to be working on today. Now, the first thing that we need to understand is how to rewrite or to write our biconditional statement. An example of a biconditional statement is that two angles are supplementary if and only if the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. So this is an example of a biconditional statement because we are seeing the verbal phrase if and only if. And to be able to understand this better, let us try to write two different statements or two different conditional statements out of this biconditional statement, which is its conditional and its converse. And to be able to do that, we need to identify the first part and the second part of our biconditional statement. So in this particular example, two angles are supplementary would be our P, and the sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees would be our Q. The task is to be able to write the conditional and its converse, and we know that the conditional statement is given by the operation P then Q. So if we're going to write this in verbal form, form using our P and Q, then we'll have if the two angles are supplementary, the sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees. This is its conditional statement, and of course, we can easily form its converse by switching how P and Q is placed. So Q will become P and P will become Q. So we'll have its converse and by sentence form, we can write it as if the sum of two angles is 180 degrees, then the angles are supplementary. So now that we have the conditional and now that we have the converse, we're able to use our biconditional statement, which is comprised of two parts and we're able to produce these two types of statement out of it. So this is basically how the biconditional statement works. And let's see if we'll be able to form another set of biconditional statement using its notation. So notation in mathematics is important because this is how we uh, make shortcut in our verbal phrase. So we know that this is our notation for conditional statement which is read as P, then Q. And for our biconditional statement, we use the two-sided arrow. And this is our if and only if, or biconditional statement notation. So whenever you use C, these two arrows, it means that we are using a biconditional statement or a verbal operation called if and only if. So that is how we read this type of notation in mathematics, which is pretty much the same as our previous example in verbal form, that the two angles are supplementary if and only if the sum of their measure is 180 degrees. So from its mathematical notation to its verbal form. Now P if and only if Q can be written in symbol form, and it can also be written in verbal phrase similar to this one, P, I, F, F, Q. Now, let's see when we can classify a biconditional statement to be true. And by definition, a biconditional statement is true if and only if both the conditional 
and its converse are true. So that's how we classify a true statement in a biconditional form. So let's say we have this biconditional statement. If a closed figure is a triangle, then it has three sides. And knowing that we have two parts of this conditional statement, P would be a closed figure is a triangle, and Q, it has three sides. And to write its conditional statement P then Q, it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. We can write it out as if a closed figure is a triangle, then it has three sides. And we know that this statement is true because if a closed figure is a triangle, so let's draw a triangle, and we know what a triangle looks like, we also know that it has one, two, three sides. So the conditional statement P then Q is satisfied and we know that this is a true statement. Now let's see if its converse is also true. By switching P and Q, we'll have Q then P. Now our new statement would be if a closed or if a closed figure has three sides, then it has, then it is a triangle. And we know that the converse is also true because if I draw one, two, three sided figure, one, two, three, we know that this is still classified as a triangle, which means our conditional statement and our converse are both true, which makes our biconditional statement, if a closed figure is a triangle, then it has three sides to be a true statement of our biconditional form. So this is how you identify if a biconditional statement is considered or classified to be a true statement when the conditional and its converse are both true. Now let's have another example. So let's say that we have P, or our first part or hypothesis would be x is equal to 5, and Q is x squared is equal to 25. If we can write this out as a biconditional statement, we need to make sure that our biconditional statement is considered to be valid. And to be able to do that, we need to write its conditional statement. So let's have the conditional statement and see if it's true. So in our statement P, then Q will have, if X is equal to 5, then X squared is equal to 25. Now, is this conditional statement true? I would say yes. Why? Because if X is equal to 5, 5 squared is equal to 25, and 5 times 5 is indeed equal to 25, which makes our statement or conditional statement true. Now the next thing that we need to do is to test if this is also true in its converse. So we're already established that P then Q is true statement, but we need to see whether it's also true or it holds true for a converse of this P and Q. So the converse of our statement would be Q then P, so that means if x squared is equal to 25, then x is equal to 5. Now, is this conditional statement true? We're going to test this by finding a counterexample that will make the hypothesis true, but the conclusion false. Can we think of an example of that? Yes, we can, because let's say x is equal to negative 5, which is a counterexample for x is equal to 5. If we square this, it's still equal to 25, which means this is true, or a hypothesis is true, but the conclusion is now false, and we know that by definition, a conditional statement like this would turn into false if that happens. So that means our converse is a false statement, so this is an example of a statement that 
a biconditional statement would be invalid because looking at the counter example for Q and P, which is if X squared is equal to 25, then X is equal to five, we're able to produce negative five as a counter example that will make the conclusion false. So this is not a valid by conditional statement. So this is how we work out problems. When we are working with by conditional statements, we need to have the conditional and its converse to be true for that particular if and only if form statement to also be true. So that is going to be our number bender challenge of the day. How are you going to write an example of a conditional statement that is irreversible? which is short of saying, writing out a true statement of a biconditional statement. So this is how we work out statements in geometry. And this is the lesson that we have for biconditional statements. So make sure that you are understanding the parts of your conditional statements to be able to understand when a biconditional statement is true and when it is not true. This is Dr. E and see you again next time. Bye!